urinary system. It is formed of the two kidneys and the excretory passages. The two kidneys are concerned with elimination of waste products, regulation of water and electrolyte balance, and maintaining the reaction of blood and the concentration of body fluids. The excretory passages are concerned with the conduction of urine from the kidney to the outside of the body. They are the two ureters, the urinary bladder and the urethra. Kidney is a mix of both exocrine and endocrine pin-shaped compound tubular gland present in the posterior part of the abdomen beneath the proteinium. Its exocrine function is the elimination of waste products. It is concerned with the regulation of water and electrolyte balance, thus maintaining the reaction of the blood and the concentration of body fluids. Its endocrine function is the production of erythropoietin, which stimulates hemopoiesis, secretion of renin, which adjusts blood pressure and the concentration of sodium in body fluids, renin and genotensin aldosterone mechanism. Also, kidney is important for activation of vitamin D, which increases calcium ion absorption in small intestine. Structure. Kidney is formed of a stroma and parenchyma. It has a thin connective tissue capsule thin trapeculi dividing the kidney into indistinct lobes and lobules, thin reticular stroma. Its parenchyma is divided into outer dark cortex and lighter inner medulla. The cortex is red and has granular appearance due to the presence of glomeruli and convoluted tubules. It is subdivided grossly into cortex cortices, which is the narrow outermost part of the cortex under the capsule. It is also called cortex proper. Renal columns of pertin, which are the cortical tissue masses which dip between the pyramids. Renal lepirans is the cortical tissue surrounding a medullary array. Renal medulla, on the other hand, is divided into conical masses, called the pyramids, which show radial striations caused by blood vessels and straight tubules. Renal medullary rays are straight projections extending from the bases of the medullary pyramids to the cortex. They lie at the center of renal lobule and contain straight collecting tubules and thick ascending limbs of helm. Renal lobe is made of a pyramid and the corresponding cortical tissue, while renal lobule includes a medullary ray and the surrounding cortical tissue. Kidney is a mix of both exocrine and endocrine pin-shaped compound tubular gland present in the posterior part of the abdomen beneath the proteinium. Its exocrine function is the elimination of waste products. It is concerned with the regulation of water and electrolyte balance, thus maintaining the reaction of the blood and the concentration of body fluids. Its endocrine function is the production of erythropoietin, which stimulates hemopoiesis, secretion of renin, which adjusts blood pressure and the concentration of sodium in body fluids, renin and genotensin aldosterone mechanism. Also, kidney is important for activation of vitamin D 
which increases calcium ion absorption in small intestine. Structure Kidney is formed of a stroma and parenchyma. It has a thin connective tissue capsule, thin trapeculi, dividing the kidney into indistinct lobes and lobules, thin reticular strom. Its parenchyma is divided into outer dark cortex and lighter inner medulla. The cortex is red and has granular appearance due to the presence of glomeruli and convoluted tubules. It is subdivided grossly into cortex cortices, which is the narrow outermost part of the cortex under the capsule. It is also called cortex proper. Renal columns of pertin, which are the cortical tissue masses which dip between the pyramids. Renal lepirans is the cortical tissue surrounding a medullary array. Renal medulla, on the other hand, is divided into conical masses, called the pyramids, which show radial striations caused by blood vessels and straight tubules. Renal medullary rays are straight projections extending from the bases of the medullary pyramids to the cortex. They lie at the center of renal lobule and contain straight collecting tubules and thick ascending limbs of helm. Renal lobe is made of a pyramid and the corresponding cortical tissue, while renal lobule includes a medullary ray and the surrounding cortical tissue. Parenchyma of the kidney is made of cortex and medulla, containing urinephorous tubules. Urinephorous tubule is the functional unit of the kidney and consists of a nephron and a collecting duct. Each nephron consists of renal corpuscle, proximal and distal convoluted tubules and the loop of Hell. According to the length of Hell's loop, two types of nephrons are present. Cortical nephrons are most numerous with short loops of Hell present in the superficial part of the cortex, and juxta medullary nephrons with long loops of Hell are situated near the junction of the cortex and medulla. Renal or Malpighian corpuscle is a spherical body found in the renal cortex and is made of Bauman's capsule and glomerulus. Bauman's capsule was originally a hollow epithelial sphere representing the expanded blind end of the nephron. It is continuous at one bowl, the urinary bowl, with the rest of the nephron. At the other bowl, the vascular bowl, it became invaginated by a vascular tuft of capillaries, the glomerulus, where the afferent and efferent arterioles enter and leave thus converting the Bowman's capsule into a double-walled cup enclosing a capsular space. The inner or visceral layer is called the glomerular epithelium and is lined by modified cells, the bodocytes, while the outer or parietal layer is called capsular epithelium and is lined by simple squamous epithelium. Glomerulus is formed of a tuft of tortuous capillary loops arising from the afferent arteriole which enters the corpuscle. These capillary loops recollect and drain into the efferent arteriole which leaves the corpuscle. The capillaries are lined by 
fenestrated endothelial cells resting on a thick continuous basement membrane. Comparison between afferent and efferent arterioles. Afferent arteriole had thick wool and larger diameter, while efferent arteriole has thin wool and smaller diameter. Afferent arteriole has distinct internal elastic lamina except at the region which forms the juxtaglomerular apparatus, where the internal elastic lamina is not clear and indistinct. Efferent arteriole has indistinct internal elastic lamina. Afferent arteriole has thick media containing many juxtaglomerular cells replacing the muscle fibers of the media. On the other hand, efferent arteriole has a thin media as it contains few numbers of juxtaglomerular cells. Afferent arteriole has a narrow adventitia. On the other hand, efferent arteriole has a thick adventitia. Glomerular epithelium, both sides, they are modified flat cells containing numerous free ribosomes, few cisterni of rough endoplasmic reticulum, few mitochondria, and prominent Golgi apparatus. They are separated from the glomerular capillaries by the subpodocytic space. They have major or primary cytoplasmic processes which resemble the feet, from which minor processes, secondary processes or bidicles, arise and terminate around the pismic membrane of the glomerular capillaries. The spaces between the minor processes are called filtration slits, which are closed by slit diaphragm. Function of bodocytes, they play an important role in filtration. They may be concerned with the renewal of glomerular capillaries pismic membrane. Function of renal corpuscle. Renal corpuscle forms the glomerular filtrate by dialysis of the plasma, plasma minus its proteins, through the filtration barrier, blood renal barrier. Blood renal barrier is the barrier which separates the blood in glomerular capillaries from the capsular space of the pulmonary capsule. It consists of the bores in the capillary endothelium, which prevent the passage of blood cells. Anything less than the size of RBCs can pass through it. The continuous basement membrane of the glomerular capillaries fused with the basal lamina of the bodocytes. The pismic membrane is effective barrier that holds back the plasma proteins. The filtration slits and their closing diaphragm. Bodocytes cytoplasm. Functions of blood renal barrier. It filters blood plasma, allows water, ions, and small molecules to enter the capsular space and prevents large plasma protein molecules from entering the capsular space. Renal tubules, those of the nephron are proximal and distal convoluted tubules and the loop of health, while those of the urinephrous tubule are beside those of the nephron there is the collecting tubules. Comparison between proximal and distal convoluted tubules. Proximal tubule is the longest segment of the nephron, about 15 mm long, and is highly convoluted. It has a diameter of about 60 micron and a narrow lumen. 
proximal tubule is lined with pyramidal cells with indistinct cell boundaries as a result of extensive lateral membrane interdigitations. The number of cells in transverse section is few, about three to four in number. The lining cells are darkly acidophilic with granular cytoplasm. The cells have acidophilic basal striations due to the presence of extensive basal plasma membrane enfoldings, having mitochondria. The cells have free acidophilic brush border. As a result of the presence of long microvilli, this brush border is rich in alkaline phosphatase enzyme. Proximal tubule is concerned with absorption of about 80% of the glomerular filtrate, absorption of amino acids, potassium, and most of the sodium, absorption of all glucose, excess of glucose more than the tubular capacity is excreted in urine, glucosuria, and proximal convoluted tubule is also concerned with the excretion of certain metabolites, dyes, and drugs as penicillin. Distal tubule is short, about 5 mm long, and less convoluted. It has a diameter of about 30 to 50 micro and a wide lumen. It is lined with cubical cells with distinct or indistinct cell boundaries due to less apparent lateral membrane interdigitations. The number of cells in transverse section is more than the proximal tubule, about four to eight cells number. Cells are lightly acidophilic with less granular cytoplasm. The cells have acidophilic basal striations due to the presence of extensive basal plasma membrane enfoldings having mitochondria. Cells show indistinct brush borders as a result of few luminar microvilli. As it comes close to the vascular bowl, distal convoluted tubule contains a group of specialized cells that form the dense spot or macula densa of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Function of the distal convoluted tubule is a resorption of about 10% of the glomerular filtrate, absorption of sodium and chlorine, together with secretion of ammonia. It is the site of action of antidiuretic hormone. It controls the acid-base balance which is important in urine concentration. Further absorption of sodium bicarbonate in exchange for hydrogen ions, rendering the urine acidic. Renal tubules, those of the nephron are proximal and distal convoluted tubules and the loop of health, while those of the urinephrous tubule are beside those of the nephron, there is the collecting tubules. Comparison between proximal and distal convoluted tubules. Proximal tubule is the longest segment of the nephron, about 15 mm long, and is highly convoluted. It has a diameter of about 60 micron and a narrow lumen. Proximal tubule is lined with pyramidal cells with indistinct cell boundaries as a result of extensive lateral membrane interdigitations. The number of cells in transverse section is few, about three to four in number. The lining cells are darkly acidophilic with granular cytoplasm. The cells have acidophilic basal striations due to the presence of extensive basal plasma membrane enfoldings, having mitochondria. The cells have free acidophilic brush borders. 
as a result of the presence of long microvilli. This cross border is rich in alkaline phosphatase enzyme. Proximal tubule is concerned with absorption of about 80% of the glomerular filtrate, absorption of amino acids, potassium, and most of the sodium, absorption of all glucose, excess of glucose more than the tubular capacity is excreted in urine, glycosuria, and proximal convoluted tubule is also concerned with the excretion of certain metabolites, dyes, and drugs as penicillin. Distal tubule is short, about 5 mm long, and less convoluted. It has a diameter of about 30 to 50 microns and a wide lumen. It is lined with cubical cells with distinct or indistinct cell boundaries due to less apparent lateral membrane interdigitations. The number of cells in transverse section is more than the proximal tubule, about 4 to 8 cells number. Cells are lightly acidophilic with less granular cytoplasm. The cells have acidophilic basal striations due to the presence of extensive basal plasma membrane enfoldings having mitochondria. Cells show indistinct brush borders as a result of few luminar microvilli. As it comes close to the vascular bowl, Distal convoluted tubule contains a group of specialized cells that form the dense spot or macula densa of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Function of the distal convoluted tubule is resorption of about 10% of the glomerular filtrate, absorption of sodium and chlorine, together with secretion of ammonia. It is the site of action of antidiuretic hormone. It controls the acid-base balance, which is important in urine concentration. Further absorption of sodium bicarbonate in exchange for hydrogen ions, rendering the urine acidic. Loop of hell. It is a U-shaped tubule about 10 to 20 millimeter long. It arises in the renal cortex, dips down for a variable distance into the medulla as descending limb, then returns to the cortex as the ascending limb, before becoming continuous with the distal convoluted tubule. It can be divided into thick descending limb is similar in structure and function to proximal convoluted tubule, but the cells are shorter and the brush border and the lateral interdigitations are less defined. Thin limbs are thin descending limb and thin ascending limb. Thin limbs have simple squamous epithelia can be differentiated from blood capillary by the absence of erythrocytes and the regular rounded shape in transverse section and bulging of their nuclei. Then thick ascending limb is the final component of the loop of helm and is similar in structure and function to distal convoluted tubule. Functions of Henle's loop. It is necessary for production of hypertonic urine by the countercurrent mechanism. It excretes sodium chloride into the surrounding tissue fluid of the medullary pyramids, rendering it hypertonic. As the collecting tubules pass through the same hypertonic environment, water is drawn out and the urine in the collecting tubules becomes hypertonic. 
collecting tubules and ducts. Collecting tubule is a continuation of the distal convoluted tubule present in the cortex and medulla. A collecting tubule drains a number of nephrons, about 5 to 10 in number. Its main function is resorption of water, about 9% of the glomerular filtrate, together with production of hypertonic urine, and it is under the control of antidiuretic hormone of the anterior pituitary. In the medullary ray, tubules join to form large tubules in the medulla. The end in larger ducts, ducts of pilin. A collecting tubule is lined by two types of cells. Light or clear cells are cuboidal or flat at the beginning, then becoming collaminar in larger collecting ducts. Intercalated or dark cells are rich in cytoplasmic organelles and have well-developed microvilli. These cells decrease in number in larger collecting tubules deep in the medulla, like ducts of pilin, which are lined by clear cells. Formation of urine. Kidney produces in 24 hours about 170 to 200 liters of glomerular filtrate, of which about 99% is absorbed by renal tubules. About 80% is absorbed by proximal tubules, 10% by distal tubules, and 9% by collecting tubules. Antidiuretic hormone of the pituitary controls the permeability of distal tubules and collecting ducts. Deficient antidiuretic hormone results in production of diluted hypotonic urine, diabetes insipidus. Juxtaglomerular apparatus or juxtaglomerular complex is a specialization of the glomerular afferent arteriole, then distal convoluted tubule of the corresponding nephron, and extraglomerular mesangial cells. It is involved in the regulation of systemic blood pressure via the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. Constituents of juxtaglomerular apparatus. Juxtaglomerular cells or renin producing cells. They are modified smooth muscle cells of the afferent arteriole. And small numbers are present in the efferent arteriole as well. Muscle fibers of the media are replaced by cells having features of myoepithelial cells with rounded nuclei and granular cytoplasm containing mature and immature membrane granules of the enzyme renin. There is absence of internal elastic lamina. This makes these juxtaglomerular cells in close contact with the endothelium and the luminal blood of the afferent arteriole. Macula densa is an area of closely backed specialized cells lining the distal convoluted tubule as it comes close to the vascular bowl. These cells are collaminar, crowded with prominent deeply stained nuclei and basal cytoplasm crowned with mitochondria. Their plasmic membrane is extremely thin and may be absent. Cells of the macula densa are thought to be sensitive to the concentration of sodium ions in the fluid within the distal convoluted tubule. Extraglomerular mesangial cells or bolar cushion 
is a mass of small cells with bill nucleon. It is found in the triangular region between the afferent and efferent arterioles at the sides and the macula densa at the base. The apex of the triangle is formed by the glomerular mesangial cells at the vascular ball. These three structures of juxtaglomerular complex are in direct contact with each other. Function of juxtaglomerular complex Secretion of renin In renal ischemia resulting from drop of blood pressure there is decrease of glomerular filtrate and sodium ion concentration in the distal tubules. This will stimulate the macula densa which in turn stimulates juxtaglomerular cells to secrete renin which converts angiotensinogen into angiotensin II, which is a potent vasoconstrictor, elevating blood pressure and restoring the renal circulation. Angiotensin II stimulates the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex to produce aldosterone, thus affecting the distal tubules and increasing sodium ion and water resorption with consequent increase in blood volume and hence in blood pressure. Other function of juxtaglomerular apparatus is the secretion of erythropoietin which stimulates the bone marrow to form new red blood corpuscles. Mesangial cells, they are flat branched basophilic cells present around the glomerular capillaries. Those that occupy the area between the afferent and efferent arterioles at the vascular bowl are called extraglomerular mesangium and are continuous with similar cells known as intraglomerular mesangial cells scattered between the glomerular capillaries. Function of mesangial cells. Their function is not quite settled. They may have a supporting and phagocytic functions. They may have a secretory function as they constitute part of the juxtaglomerular complex. They may be concerned with renewal of the basement membrane of the glomerular capillaries. They are contractile and respond to vasoconstrictors. Renal vasculature. Each kidney is supplied by a single renal artery, which he divides in the hilum into two main branches. Each of them gives rise to several interloper arteries that ascend between the pyramids to the Colchico medullary junction, where they branch to form arcuit arteries. Arcuit arteries run in an arc like course and give rise to numerous cortical interlobular arteries which radiate towards the capsule branching to form the afferent arterioles of the glomerule. Afferent arterioles form the glomerulus from which efferent arterioles leave the renal corpuscle and divide into pretubular capillaries which supply the proximal and distal convoluted tubules. In the inner third of the cortex, in juxta medullary nephrons with long loops of hen, efferent arterioles are large and give the arteriola recta or vasa recta for supply 
of the loop of hell and the middle, thus making portal circulation from rebranching of the ephraim artery loops. The medulla has also direct arterial supply from arcuate arteries to supply the collecting tubules. Finally, the cortical and medullary capillaries drain via interlobular veins to arcuate veins at the corticomedullary junction, then to interlobular veins running between the pyramids. At the hilus form the renal veins, these finally drain into inferior vena cave. Renal vasculature. Each kidney is supplied by a single renal artery, which divides in the hilum into two main branches. Each of them gives rise to several interloper arteries that ascend between the pyramids to the Colchico medullary junction, where they branch to form arcuit arteries. Arcuit arteries run in an arc-like course and give rise to numerous cortical interlobular arteries, which radiate towards the capsule, branching to form the afferent arterioles of the glomeruli. Afferent arterioles form the glomerulus, from which efferent arterioles leave the renal corpuscle and divide into pretubular capillaries, which supply the proximal and distal convoluted tubules. In the inner third of the cortex, in juxta medullary nephrons with long loops of hell, efferent arterioles are large and give the arteriola recta or vasa recta for supply of the loop of hell and the medulla, thus making portal circulation from rebranching of the ephraim arterioles. The medulla has also direct arterial supply from arcuate arteries to supply the collecting tubules. Finally, the cortical and medullary capillaries drain via interlobular veins to arcuate veins at the corticomedullary junction, then to interlobular veins running between the pyramids. At the hilus form the renal veins, these finally drain into inferior vena cave.